Stephen Gilbo openly identified as a socialist while arguing for the carbon tax. It was definitely a striking moment in the most recent House of Commons debate. While this proclamation was pretty bold, it is not completely unexpected given the Liberal Minister's history of extreme activism and tone-deaf stances on environmental issues. He recently said that if you don't have a plan to fight climate change, you don't have a plan for the economy and you don't have a plan to keep people safe. Does equating environmental policies to economic well-being really make sense? Or is Gilbo trying to scare Canadians into submitting to his extreme climate agenda? Trudeau's minister is not only breaking with the supposedly center-left policies of the Liberal Party, but showing how far he is willing to take his climate hysteria. Why did Gilbo proudly out himself as a socialist? And what will be Polyev's response to this latest attack from Trudeau's radical climate activist turned Liberal minister? Stick around to find out. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. This week in the House of Commons, amid an intense debate about climate action and the controversial carbon tax, Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo openly announced to the House that he is a socialist, and a proud one at that. His statement seems representative of how the Liberal Party's values have shifted. After all, socialism involves governmental control over industries and the means of production and according to Marxism, it serves as a transition stage towards communism. Setting this aside, even hearing the minister's remarks in context somehow makes it all the worse. The outcry began when Conservative MP Ted Falk argued that the Prime Minister, along with the Socialists and the Separatists, are to blame for the costly carbon tax that is leaving Canadians out in the cold. After eight years, we now have the Socialists, the Separatists, and this Prime Minister who's just not worth the cost. They're all part of this costly carbon tax coalition that is leaving Canadians out in the cold. The Rural Affairs Minister recently told Manitobans that if they wanted the tax break, they had to elect more Liberals. Wow. Well, guess what? The folks in St. Boniface, St. Fatel did elect a Liberal, and they're still paying the carbon tax. Yesterday, he had a chance to vote to keep the tax off and the heat on for his constituents. Why did that member choose to leave the members of St. Boniface, St. Fatel in the cold? Although normally a question like Fox would not be recognized, Liberal Minister Stephen Gilbo took the opportunity to take the floor and make this concerning proclamation. Um, I'm, a, I'm a liberal and a proud socialist, Mr. Speaker, but this reminds me of a certain quote from Prime Minister Harper who talked about the fight against climate change as a socialist plot. That's what the Conservative Party, and here it is, you have it again, Mr. Speaker, they do not believe that climate change is an issue. They do not believe we should do anything about it. They oppose electrification of transportation. They oppose deals like Volkswagen, Stellantis, and Nordvolt. They oppose wind development off the shores of Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, Mr. Speaker. They have no plan for, to fight climate change. They have no plan for the economy. They have no plan for the future of Canada. It's interesting that Gilbo would reference Harper's letter dismissing the Kyoto Accord as a socialist scheme. Some of you might recall that Harper and the Conservative government criticized the Kyoto Accord on measures to fight against global warming. The former Prime Minister noted that the economy would be crippled if Canada was forced to meet the Accord's timetable to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Harper not only criticized this aspect of the Accords, but he rightly pointed out that the Accord focused too much on carbon dioxide rather than pollutants. As a student of economics, Harper understood something that Trudeau and his minister Gilbo obviously do not. He believed the objectives implemented by Canada to meet the goals resulting from the Accords were not realistic, and he was right. At the time, Canada's target was to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 6% by 2012. Instead, national emissions increased by over 30%. So it's not a surprise that we withdrew from the Kyoto Accords in 2011. And why not? The world's two largest emitters of greenhouse gases weren't even part of the Accords, so why was Canada trying to follow an agreement that wouldn't even have a tangible impact on fighting climate change? That's not even taking into account the multiple warnings from ministers and economists that achieving those targets would send the economy into a recession. In making this connection, the proudly socialist minister seemed to further underline his own perspective on the policy debates, which was met with some boos and audible shouts in the House of Commons. But how did Gilbo even get here? The very same many who scaled Toronto's CN Tower in 2001 to protest Canada's decision not to ratify the Kyoto Protocol. No wonder he can recall Harper's criticism of the accord. He probably recited it while climbing the tower. So why is Trudeau letting this socialist dictate Canada's climate policy? Maybe because his climate agenda is as unrealistic as Trudeau's. In an interview with CTV back in April, the minister characterized the carbon tax as a system aimed at redistributing wealth. He explained that by design, those with the highest incomes bear most of the costs under the tax. Gilbo says that conservatives only oppose the tax because they do not care about tackling climate change. 
What the minister fails to realize is that, contrary to his claims that carbon pricing is all about redistributing wealth, most Canadians cannot bear the pressure of the tax, along with higher living costs, the housing crisis, and rising inflation. Those with higher incomes are obviously impacted by these conditions the same way it affects many middle-class Canadians. Gilbo also said earlier this year that Canadians shouldn't complain about paying for the carbon tax since it will help save on paying for more costly disaster relief caused by climate change-related disasters. However, he seems to be overlooking how many of these so-called climate change fires were actually set by humans, something that climate change policies cannot help with. On another occasion, Stephen Gilbo had unexpectedly attended the opposition party's convention in Quebec City. While there, he criticized their positioning on environmental issues. Clearly, Gilbo is a bit of a bully when it comes to his ideas of what Canadians should put up with and think, something he shares in common with Trudeau. He even stated that the opposition leader, Pierre Polyev, is very easy to attack on the environment because he does not believe in climate change. This notion that the Conservatives are climate change deniers has been repeated multiple times by Liberals during the latest question period in the House of Commons. However, is pretty far from the truth. Polyev has never rejected the seriousness and urgency of climate change, but has merely proposed a more technology-focused approach, instead of resorting to taxing already struggling Canadians in the middle of an economic crisis. Our common sense plan uses technology and not taxes to bring down both emissions and the cost of living. But there are a few things Polyev does stand against. The leader of the opposition denounced Marxist ideologies multiple times in the past. Back in August during Black Ribbon Day, he said, May we forever remain on guard against fascism, communism, and all other forms of socialism. While climate change is an issue that needs to be tackled head-on, the liberal government fails to realize that they do not have to work towards solving one issue while creating another, all at the expense of already struggling Canadians. And while many Canadians are ready to take climate action, they are not and should not be willing to endure the cold winter temperatures because it costs too much to heat their home. Canadians shouldn't have to skip meals to cut down on costs or make sacrifices that hurt their families, all because of these climate policies. Everyone is opposed to pollution, but most people are also against imposing heavy and unnecessary increases in the cost of living. Canada's carbon footprint is less than 2% of the world's total, and our environmental record is highly competitive. So why is this liberal government sacrificing the livelihoods of hardworking Canadians when it is not urgently needed? And while there are other solutions to explore, I'd like Trudeau and Minister Gilbo to answer that. The Liberal government's experiment is turning Canada into an increasingly socialist country and a nightmare for Canadians. Instead of the poor, middle class, and the rich, Canada now has the homeless, those living on government assistance, the working poor, people on pensions struggling to make ends meet, the middle class, and then finally, the rich. Perhaps Trudeau and his crony Gilbo should remember that. Well, that's all for now. What do you think of Gilbo's comments? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, kindly subscribe and leave a like for this video and our other videos because they go a long way in helping our latest content rank. Follow us on our new Twitter account, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.